The Pasadena Business Journal is brought to you by these generous sponsors, Clear Lake Volkswagen, Texas Citizens Bank, and Remax First Source. Please visit these fine businesses for helping bring you great programming. Here we go now, here we go now, here we go now, here we go now. Welcome to our first show of the Pasadena Business Journal. I'm Michael Garfield, your host, and this is the show where we're going to explore everything you need to know about Pasadena, the great businesses in this great, vibrant, growing community. On today's show, we're going to go to a restaurant, a family favorite that's been around a few years, and a Western Wear company that's been around over 40 years that ships worldwide. We're going to take a peek inside the Chamber of Commerce to learn what's going on and talk about new business development so we can expect what is happening in this community in 2018. The Pasadena Business Journal starts now. One of the more vibrant spots in this great area of Pasadena is right here where I'm standing. This is a phenomenal restaurant called Jimmy Changas. Now, it's been here quite a while, and this was the very first location of the entire chain. Now, somebody has to come up with a great concept and a brilliant idea for this. That one person is Russell Ibarra. Russell is the CEO, founder, and he calls himself the master enchilada roller. And it just so happens we pulled him out of the kitchen to have a little conversation over right here. Russell, first yes. of all, thank you for having wow. us over here and congrats on this success. How long has this particular location been here? Uh, we're coming up on our sixth year. Six years. Yeah. Gotcha. Now you started the Gringos chain yes. back in the day, Laporte, not too far from over here. Where did the concept come from of taking the Gringos and then expanding it to something like Jimmy Changas? Well, we wanted, we had a, a bunch of menu items that we wanted to include on our Gringos menu, but it was just getting too large. So we decided, hey, let's just do a new concept. Uh, it's real close to our corporate office, only two miles away, where we actually have a Gringos. Mm -hmm. So we, we just thought it'd be a great fit for our concept to have one to where now we can position a Jimmy's in between two Gringos and have have the mar uh, market cornered on tax max. Gotcha. Now, when you open the location, obviously, you know, it's all about location, location. You know that being yes. a restaurant tour. And you pick this as the very first one in Pasadena. And I guess the question is, I mean, how has the response been? I mean, I remember coming here for the opening about six years or so ago. And even right now, lunch, you've got a packed house. The community, has they, have they really yes. taken you under their arms? Fortunately, the community has been uh, supporting us since day one. We've been able to expand now to four locations. And uh, we just built it really about the, uh, around the same uh, philosophy as our, our Gringos uh, mm -hmm. concept. Mm -hmm. And it was to provide the absolute highest quality product at the best value possible and create a very fun environment. And I think we've done that with Jimmy's with the playground for the kids and of course the margaritas for the parents. And, uh, and just great food, overall great food. Yeah. Stuffed avocados, uh, chili rellenos, uh, ahi tuna salads, uh, all kinds of things you wouldn't expect from a typical Tex-Mex, but we obviously carry all the traditional stuff. You talk about the fun, and it's the concept, but it starts with the logo. Yes. And, you know, you're wearing it over right now, and you look around, it's everywhere and all the swag. I mean, where did the concept of the logo come up, and why go with the monkey? I'm a huge fan of Bucky's, and I wanted something, I wanted a cartoon-like logo to tie into our, um, our brand, and that's why we went with it. No, it's, it's, it's very fun and obviously you know you look around and there's kids and especially the signature of all the Jimmy Chongas right. it's it's that gym and that yes. playground out there how big a part of that was it in the concept versus you don't have those at gringos right it's, it's huge actually we have them at a couple of gringos but yes most of them do not have it uh, it's it's huge I mean parents can come out and relax and have their kids play and be safe I mean it's just a safe environment right yeah now, obviously if you could drive by here this location on any weekend almost any night but certainly there's a great line a great atmosphere it's a great yes. fun I mean you could just check out the vibe over here and you've since started this Pasadena location you have built more Jimmy Changa locations yes. there's several others what's the overall concept what's your what's down the road how far are you gonna take this concept well we'll keep growing them and we actually have two gringos in the process of being open uh, built next year uh, mm -hmm. actually three we have three gringos but Jimmy's, uh, if we find the right location, we will definitely do another one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the neat quirks, for lack of a better term, is something that you've got your start in the restaurant a long time ago. Yes. And as you look around the restaurant, there's so many different things. And one of the most unique things is uh, the chairs. Yes. You've got different color chairs. You know, normally restaurants, they like to have one, you know, solid look like that. What's the story behind the chairs? Well, when we opened up Gringo's 25 years ago in Pearland, we didn't have any money to buy new chairs. So we kind of just... Uh, bought used ones anywhere and everywhere we could. Mm -hmm. So when we opened up Jimmy's, we went with basically four different styles of chairs in our mm -hmm. restaurant. And uh, the chairs are just a reminder of where we came from. 
So not to forget that it was really tough in the beginning, but we're very grateful to be where we're at today. Yeah, and they're still comfy, and the yes. foods taste just oh, as yeah. well in every yes. single one of these chairs. Last question, and, and let's go back to the city of Pasadena. And I mean, I know the Pasadena, you know, the residents, they, they continue to love and they support you all. So you want to continue to give back to this community. Yes. And you do a lot for this community, too, especially with the employees and the people you are. The overall, you know, the, 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 the message that you want to give to everybody out in Pasadena in terms of what you can continue to give back to the community. Well, uh, giving back to the community is really a huge part of our, our branding. Mm -hmm. um, our core value, number three, reinvesting our team members in local community is huge. As a matter of fact, uh, a little over three years ago, we did a huge fundraiser for Officer Mike Huffman, who had lost his leg in a terrible accident in West mm -hmm. Texas. We uh, company-wide donated 50% of our sales from one day and were able to buy him an uh, Autobach X3 prosthetic leg, and, and it, over it cost over $100,000, but we did that because of the support of the community and we we're very happy to do so. No, you continue yeah. to give things back and I know it's a great concept. Yes. I, you know, on behalf of everybody, I want to congratulate you on your success and something tells me I think people want a second Pasadena location. Room for that? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Pasadena is a big town. It is. Yeah. Yeah, Keep serving up the great food and again, congrats on your success and hope you continue to grow. All right. All right. That much. is the chief enchilada roller right now. You know, you know what? You got a long line waiting outside as always. Why don't you get back there and start making it? All right. I'll do that. Russell Thank A. Barai. Jimmy Changas, make sure you come check it out. We've all been successful in business in this community and we've grown to, to know the operations of how the city works along with the individuals that help make it work. They said I couldn't dream called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. We just, just finished dinner, dinner and it was time for homework. homework. He I hates hate homework. homework. It makes no sense. I don't know how he finds anything in his backpack. I can't find my backpack. Finally, Finally we found, found my his assignment. assignment. He rushed through it. I wonder if he even learned anything. I wasn't going to get it right, so I just wanted to get back to playing my video game. At least I'm good at that. I couldn't even read his handwriting. Holding the pencil makes my hand hurt. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying try as hard a as I harder. can. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free online resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. Here you'll get personalized recommendations, practical tips, daily access to experts and more. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. As we continue our trek across the great city of Pasadena for the Pasadena Business Journal, we are here in an iconic store that has been here 41 years, thanks to this man right here. It's Larry oh, Allen from uh, Allen's uh, Western Wear. Congrats on your success, my friend. Well, I appreciate that. It's been a long ride, a very long ride, and uh, we've, we've done our best to try and keep everything local here, family operated for the community. Yeah, well, you certainly have, and you've got a great selection of boots. I'm going to, you know, go up and down over here. You know, boots, western wear, saddlery, I mean, you've got it all covered. I want to start with this. Your background has been about 40 years, I think, you were in the rodeo, professional rodeo. How do you go from someone physically in the rodeo to being a businessman? Well, of course, my, my, my forte was the rodeo, and I was invited through several of the companies through college to participate at the rodeos by giving away specific items, koozies, cups, things of that nature, and it grew into later, hey, how about how about opening up this and let's try this and 
So it, it, it that's the way it began, and uh, here's where we are today. Yeah, well, you hear you've got a great, great establishment, and you know I, I'm going to lead answer them my own question over here. Why Pasadena? You're a Pasadena native. Now you could have opened up anywhere in the Houston area. Why here in your hometown? Well, it, it is my hometown. My parents <clears throat> came here after the war, uh, had our family. Uh, went to school here, the Independent School District, my brother and sister, and we've all been successful in business in this community, and we've grown to, to know the operations of how the city work along with the individuals that help make it work. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> there was no other choice for me, and I've been all over the country rodeoing, and I always come back here. Yeah. How has the business grown? I mean, I assume you did not start off with a beautiful shop like this. I mean, where did you start and how did you, you know, come to the specific location? Well, we started out as a one-stop shop kind of for Wrangler Blue Jean Company. That's how it began. And as we grew, they pulled their program back. And then we started doing business with all the other major corporations. And that's, that's how it was established. And most of the people that have been involved in this business we're gone. I'm still here just trying to figure it out, but Pasadena has been very good to my family and me, and uh, I give Rodeo all the uh, applause for putting me to where I am today. Yeah, well, obviously, you've got a great selection. You've got a great community. Now, we look around. We see boots. We see jeans. We see hats, but also, I hear in the back, you got something super secret. You actually make saddles, and with that, we're going to go back, and we're going to go have a little quick chat with Mr. Saddlemaker himself, Tony. You know, I'm smelling some great leathers because we are in the back of Allen's Western Wear and Saddlery with Larry here. Now, Larry, I love the smell and I love the handcraft. These, these are handmade saddles and you ship these things all over the world, too. Yeah, we, we, we ship a uh, product just about any place anybody wants to buy it. <laughs> and we do a great business with it with Tony and his brothers and his father. And we've been doing it for a long time. We manufacture professional products. For the Cowboys, Tony's in the process of some finishing up some antique work right here, repair work, and then we'll jump back on to the new. But Tony can tell you he's the supervisor. He handles all of the production. I just stay out of the way. Well, you do a good job of staying out of the way. And I'm actually scared to touch this, Tony, because your work is just, just top-notch and top craft. The process of creating a saddle, I mean, how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been doing this, you know, for the last uh, 27 years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, and I've been with Mr. Allen for the last 20 years and uh, the main thing here what we do is uh, competition saddles which we can make anything you want you know mm -hmm. so uh, we having a good time. I have to assume obviously when it comes to saddles and horses it's very customizable people want their logos and their initials and things and we're looking at one right here where is this saddle in the process is this done or are you still working yes, on this no, one? No it's, it's done mm -hmm. it's done you, I just finished this you know yeah so yes well, it is beautiful. I mean, the craftsmanship is number one. And obviously, you know, Larry, you've been doing this so long. It is about craftsmanship and it is about customer service. So we want to congratulate you, both of you, on your business over there. You know, you can make these with my initials, right? Yes, sir. Good. I want a Longhorn on there. I, I see a lot. I see a lot of Aggie stuff over here. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of that going on. Yes, it is. Uh, well, whatever you want, if you want any logo and any saddle, definitely take a look at this here. It's a Pasadena institution. It is uh, Allen's Western Wear and Saddlery. Make sure you check this out and support these great guys. The, the overall health of all the businesses in Pasadena is excellent. They are, I like to say this, they're firing on all cylinders. It's okay to be scared. Hmm? You don't have to be so strong. Strength is not optional. This is my mother, my purpose. Real muscle is lifting her spirits between bedpans and bad news from doctors that doubt her strength. Strength is buried in bills, managing meds, and swallowing those moments of, Mom, it's me, your daughter. Remember, my strength is super, but I'm still human, right? Look who's here. There she is. Thanks for your patience. How you feel? If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Or call 1-877-333-5885.
There's a lot of growth happening in Pasadena. And to learn more about that, we spoke with Barbara Kutzinger with the Bay Area Houston Economic Partnership. Business-wise, we're getting still uh, continuing a lot of health care, a lot of manufacturing, chemical industry, specialty chemical, a lot of retail, uh, and new restaurants. It, it's, it's all happening, all of it. You know, for a long time, we, we had, uh, you know, some new business parks, you know, that were built probably starting 2003, but they, they hadn't really taken off. Now we've got, you know, beautiful new business parks coming in that are that are um, housing, you know, new companies coming in that maybe cater to or they're the suppliers for a lot of the manufacturing companies. They're downstream industries. Um, we just have so much going on. And, and you know, for a long time, we, we didn't have a lot of places to, you know, didn't have a lot of new restaurants. We had restaurants. But people were asking for some of the national restaurants that were locating in other areas. So um, now it seems like we're getting everything. One of the, the um, things that I think is really neat, it, actually at the corner of, of Crenshaw and Beltway 8, you've got health care, you have hotels. Um, I can remember when we really didn't have any new hotels in the area. We have five new ones now, five new. So we had new hotels that came in. And it's a good thing because with what's happening uh, with all the new chemical plants, you know, you have people that are coming in that, that for all types of business, you know, maybe to, maybe they're consultants from an outside area, Maybe they're temporary workers, they're looking for uh, short-term short housing for maybe 30 days, and they're looking for a plant. We've got all these beautiful new hotels that have come up, a lot of them uh, right there along Beltway 8, and there's still one more coming in that I know of. Um, we have the market at Crenshaw um, right next to So the first thing that, that, that came to that intersection as far as retail goes was the academy, huge academy. And then in the front, then we had the Olive Garden. And then it just mushroomed from there. And it's kind of marching toward Fairmont Parkway, if you will. Tuesday morning, Burlington, more restaurants. And then to the side of that, you have new health care. We have several new multifamily projects that either just finished recently or are being built right now. So you have more new multifamily. Uh, we've got a lot of new uh, businesses that have come in along Spencer Highway, Fairmont Parkway. Yes, we have road work too. Expansion of Beltway 8, get people there quicker. Uh, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm, I moved to Pasadena many, many years ago, and although I don't live there now, I am amazed at all, all the things going on. Thanks, Barbara, and we'll be right back with more of the Pasadena Business Journal. The outlook is good for Pasadena. You know, the Chamber's been around since 1927, so we've been serving our community for a long time. Uh, we continue to see growth across all industries. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Hey guys, today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Give kisses. Give kisses. Come on. Give kisses. Give kisses. <laughs> You heard how loud that was. I know. I heard, that. I heard. It, it, it wasn't you. Yeah. It was the. Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Bacon. Bacon. <laughs> 
Pasadena Business Journal continues. And right now we are standing pretty much at ground zero of everything that happens in the Pasadena area. When it comes to businesses, it is the Pasadena Chamber of Commerce. And we are here with Miss Chamber of Commerce. Her name is Christina Womack. She is the president and CEO of the chamber. Believe it or not, these five minutes, it's been relatively quiet, but I have to assume this is just the hubbub of everything that's going on in the entire city. It is. You never know what's going to come through our doors, and we're here to try to provide resources as people need them. Well, as we look around, the, just even the lobby, we see pamphlets, and it's really about promoting every business in this city. Start with this, the, the entire overall concept of the Chamber of Commerce. What's the purpose? So I think you have to understand who we are first. So we're a nonprofit organization, and our focus is trying to promote economic development and community growth. So supporting Pasadena's businesses, residents, and you know being a resource for those members that are in need. And so we do that through workshops, through marketing services, and trying to just connect our community together. Yeah. And talk about the makeup, the members of there. I mean, obviously, there's so many large corporations over here, but there's also mom and pop stores. There's restaurants we've already spoken to. Who who is the membership made up of? Yeah, great. Question. So we have about 620 members, and that's going to be across all industries. So small business, uh, retail, restaurants, but then big industry, healthcare, mm -hmm. um, and the Pasadena Chamber is not bound by geographic borders either. So members join the chamber from all over the greater Houston area um, because they're either looking to do business in Pasadena, uh, they have clients in Pasadena, and so it's really about supporting all of our members and meeting their unique needs. Yeah, for companies and businesses who do operate in and around this area, I mean, what, what's what's the reason? What what's the the, the selling point of joining the chamber? So a couple of things. So, um, you know, being in business in Pasadena, it's about our proximity to where we're located. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's we've got the range of real estate, both for commercial, for residential. But joining the chamber is about being able to build relationships. And so we provide that credibility for businesses, um, the opportunity to network and build relationships, which mm -hmm. ultimately provides growth for businesses. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also the, the aspect of advocacy. So we really work with businesses to promote them um, on legislative agenda items. So whether that's local, state, or national level, uh, we're the voice for business. So members come to us for different needs, and it just kind of is a matter of us figuring out what is going to suit their needs. Yeah. I mean, Pasadena has grown so much year after year and generation after generation. And we've already spoke with a you know company who's been here well over 40 years. We've also been to a restaurant that's been here less than six years. What's the outlook for business in Pasadena? The outlook is good for Pasadena. Mm -hmm. You know, the Chamber's been around since 1927, so we've been serving our community for a long time. Uh, we continue to see growth across all industries. So the, the good thing about Pasadena is it's not limited to just one specific segment mm -hmm. of business. So we see growth. I mean, just since Hurricane Harvey alone, we've had 40 new members join the Chamber, and that's, again, across all size. Mm -hmm. But you continue to see expansion along the Beltway and 225 corridors, um, at the Crenshaw and Marketplace um, Plaza. So we continue to see people come through and it's an exciting time for us yeah i mean without th without a doubt the beltway it opens up so you know so many different opportunities for people to easy access pasadena you talk about growth let's talk about trends though i mean i i i see restaurant after restaurant popping up we've seen great retail shops what are some of the trends that we see in the outlook for 2018 yeah so i think working with our city of pasadena um our new administration has a heavy focus on a business friendly environment so they are working to attract industry but then naturally we are attracting um the retail and the restaurant. So every time you turn a corner, you see a new um, big name eatery that's opening up and chose Pasadena. And so um, you're going to continue to see more retail expansion, but you also are going to see the small business. Um, and I think as a part of the community as a whole, working with our Economic Development Corporation, we're going to see trying to not only recruit new business, but retain and redevelop where it makes sense as well. Not a lack of places to eat or shop. And I'll right. get you out of here with this one. If we can look at the calendar several years ahead, you know, you look at 2020, 2023, 2025, where do you see Pasadena? So I think you're going to continue to see redevelopment. You're going to continue to see um, traditions that stick around because our community is rich on history, but you're going to also see new businesses and new generations of business owners in our community continue to step up, new leadership and more business opportunities for everyone. Christina Womack, she's the president and CEO of the chamber. She's growing the city and growing other ways too over there. <laughs> Congratulations on the impending pending baby coming. Hey, if you want business in and around Pasadena, First of all, number one place to stop is right here with Christina and her staff at the Pasadena Chamber of Commerce. This is what high blood pressure looks like. Talk with your doctor to create a plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. 
We hope you enjoyed our very first edition of the Pasadena Business Journal. I'm Michael Garfield, your host, and we did hope you learned a lot about what's going on with the business and the growth community here in and around this great city of Pasadena. To keep updated with everything that's going on, make sure you keep it tuned right here. See you next time on the Pasadena Business Journal. The Pasadena Business Journal was brought to you by these generous sponsors. Clear Lake Volkswagen, Texas Citizens Bank, and Remax First Source. Please visit these fine businesses for helping bring you great programming.